Bueno, amigos, aunque no lo crean, es domingo por la mañana y vamos a tomar unos cócteles que se diseñaron exclusivamente para la película Babylon. Antes que nada, uh, Damien, welcome to Mexico City. We're, we're going to have a few cocktails. It's a okay. Sunday morning, but let's pretend we're in Madrid, which is like 7 p.m., 8 p.m. Diego Calva, <laughs> bienvenido. Como siempre, me da muchísimo gusto saludarte, amigo. Que te vaya tan bien y este exitazo que estás teniendo. Muchas gracias, Oscar. The first cocktail, my friends, it's called Pinche Margot. How can we translate Pinche Margot to Spanish? It's like... Whoa. Dam Margot. Dam Margot, yeah. Dam Margot. That's the name of the cocktail. That's the name of the cocktail. Dam Margot. Dam Margot. Dam Margot. The cocktail, uh, are you a tequila or mezcal drinker or bourbon drinker, uh, Damien? Well, Diego once brought me uh, some very uh, special uh, mezcal. Mezcal. Yeah, mezcal. So, mezcal. the one with so mezcal, mezcal, the one with mezcal is going to be for my friend, for, the, for Damien, and the one with tequila is going to be for you. Okay. okay. Eh, Pinche Margot, he's a uh, Nicolás, uh, our mixologist. ¿Qué tiene este, esta bebida, uh, Nicolás? Esta bebida está hecha a base de tequila, está inspirada en un margarita. Ajá. Que contiene un óleo sacar, un hecho de naranjas, Ajá. miel de agave y un bitter que tiene cúrcuma, un poquito de chile y manzanilla. Perfecto. Perfecto. Este va a ser para mi amigo eh, Diego. Um, Perfecto. When I was seeing the movie, uh, Damien, it's like history keeps repeating itself you know mm. what i mean right now we're we're in the moment the of the translation between going to the cinema and seeing the movies in our house mm -hmm. via platforms mm -hmm. and it's also a change you mm -hmm. know what i mean society is changing all mm -hmm. the time of course when you change from the from the silent movies to the talkies was the biggest the biggest mm -hmm. uh, change of all you know and which can also um, show us the personality of the artists you know what mm -hmm. i mean uh, yeah, do you remember yeah. do you remember the exact moment when you decide this i'm going to do a movie about this period of time yeah it was about uh almost 15 years ago um you know and and uh initially it was just the sort of broad strokes of the idea to do a sort of ensemble movie um at this time uh, because, yeah, the, the, I sort of realized that that transition from silent to sound, it was so fast and so kind of brutal that even though there had been some films that had dealt with the subject matter before, I hadn't seen something that went into the, the more sordid details of it, the sort of darker underbelly of that story. So it felt like there was a real um, uh, kind of new perspective to take on it, especially in the vibe of a sort of Fellini-esque, uh -huh. you know, big ensemble panoramic epic. How can you sell a movie like this to the to the to the studios? It, it was a, well, an easy yeah, task. That's not easy. No. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> yeah, good question. Uh -huh. it's a good question. We got lucky. Uh, you know, uh, that Paramount. Uh, I think ultimately it was the only studio that was willing to to take the risk that they um, uh, they saw something in the project for whatever reason and and. Uh, and let us do it. But we had to be, you know, very clear at the outset that this was going to be what it was going to be, that it was going to be very extreme, that it was going to, you know, be R-rated and have a whole kind of range of behavior on screen that you don't see in movies that much anymore uh, mm -hmm. today. Um, and that it was going to be a mix of tones and genres. It was going to be comedy and tragedy. It was going to be the whole, uh, the whole spectrum of experience. Because that, to me, was the only way to do justice this, to this time um, in, in, in Hollywood history and to these characters. Yeah. It got me because he, you know, it, it has the sense of madness and the, se mm. the sense of searching, you know, mm -hmm. on everything. But you have a, 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 a common denominator, like a common sense. It's, it's very romantic at the same time, like all your movies, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because at the core, it's the search for art. Mm. That's my opinion, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So it doesn't feel so fragmented, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? It feels like, and it's, you know, I was telling uh, Diego that I was skeptical because it was three hours long, you know what I mean? But once you get to the journey, it's like butter, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's very easy. Nos sentimos tan orgullosos de ti, querido amigo, porque ha sido un año muy importante para mexicanos. Este noche huerta, Mabel Cadena, muchísima gente le está haciendo en, todo, en todos lados, pero creo que tu labor en esta película es, es, es muy, muy importante. Eres, eres la línea argumental, realmente. Es tu historia. A pesar de que estás acompañado con de Brad Pitt, de Margot Robbie, pero realmente... 
tú eres la, eres la voz cantante de esta historia. Supongo que tienes que dejar el temor y el miedo a un lado, ¿no? Para emprender este viaje. Um, sí, definitivamente, pero de todas maneras te acompaña, ¿no? Claro. El nerviosismo, el miedito siempre está, pero... Pues yo tuve una oportunidad muy grande y también fue tener a este muchacho, este, este señor a mi lado, que siempre estuvo conmigo. O sea, Demian de verdad invirtió en mí desde que yo aprendiera inglés. Este, como ya sabes, hasta hicimos una versión de la película Exacto. en nuestro en iPhone. iPhone. Que Entonces, lo tiene Demian. Y Demian me preparó mucho. Entonces, para el primer día del set, claro que te da nervio, claro que da miedo, claro que sabes que Brad tiene muchísima más experiencia. Pero pues, si tienes un equipo de alguna manera y te sientes preparado, pues ya, como que medio puedes sorfear ese miedo. <laughs> Damien, it's to your turn for the, for the drink. Ajá. It's a Ruján. ¿Qué tiene el Ruján, eh, Nico? Tiene mezcal. Mezcal, of course. Tiene té verde y mango. Green tea, green tea and mango. And a little bit of absinthe. Y absinthe. Oh, oh very, you can, very, you can very get Babylon. <laughs> very Babylon. Very Babylon. Nice. Me encanta el absinthe, la verdad. Sí. que le estaba diciendo a Nico, me da un poco de pena, pero... No, no, cheers. 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 Salud. 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 Uh, Demi, when you were do, uh, doing the, the audition mm. process, mm. The, so good. Did, did, good. You ha, did you have in your mind mm. the things that you were looking for in an actor for your character, or are you are a director who, which is open always to see something that you don't expect on the, on the casting process? Well, I, I guess it's a little bit of both, you know, the, the uh, I, you know, writing the script, I, yeah, I can't help but have a certain vision of the character in my head, but I feel like you got to be open to, uh, unless you want to make an animated film and mm. do all the voices yourself, if you're working with actors, you know, you've got to be open to what they're going to bring to it and, and to things that might surprise you. Um, so... You know, especially with a role like Manny, we, you know, we wound up sort of um, auditioning so many actors. It took so long to sort of find the perfect person for the role. And you're learning something about the character with every, every audition, every self-tape, every actor you work with. And then once I met Diego, you know, I'd say, you know, like Diego was saying, you know, we worked together for almost a year. I learned about the character through him as well. The character changed just through Diego and watching Diego play him and seeing, oh, this, this really is landing really beautifully. And this I might want to rewrite a bit. And this, oh, maybe I could tweak to fit Diego more. And then ideas mm -hmm. Diego would have. Because, um, of course, Diego had his own perspective on the character. You know, uh, in many ways, Diego shares a lot with Manny, especially when we were making the movie. Exactly. You know, it's Mexican almost like a meta cinema, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um. So it's like, I wanted to learn from that, you know. Um, so by the time you're shooting, I think the hope is that It's this mix. You're staying true to your initial vision for the character, but it's been completely transformed and made alive um, by the actor. And and uh, but you got to be lucky. You got to get the right actor. You got to get someone exactly. who's really going to make it there. It's also a leap of faith, you know. On, Unfortunately, on I was stuck with Diego. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Mira, todos los días, Diego, man. todos. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you have to be very you lucky. Be like, uh, you're not uh, always. You know. <laughs> Todos los viajes, eh, y sobre todo este, del calibre de este, al final te arrojan una serie de enseñanzas. ¿Las tienes claras, lo que pasó después de Babilón? ¿Y, y, qué, te, y qué te cambió a ti, Babilón, en particular, como persona y como artista, más que nada? Um, pues mira, creo que yo, por ejemplo, nunca había visto un trabajo tan meticuloso y nunca había hecho un trabajo como tan meticuloso y como tan, digamos, profundo, ¿no? Eh, me cambió la perspectiva completamente de cómo quiero ser un actor, porque uh -huh. con Demian tuve por primera vez unos procesos que yo nunca había tenido. Crear un personaje que pasa tantos años en su vida en, en la película, tener todo un tiempo de preparación, ¿no? poder este, estudiar otros actores. O sea, con Demian aprendí, digo, él es muy cinéfilo, es muy meticuloso, entonces aprendí también una nueva manera de aproximarme al quehacer como actoral, cosa que me quiero llevar claro. muchísimo. Que tiene que ver más con la técnica, digo, que, porque mira, el talento lo puedes tener y ya te lo claro. hemos visto en otras películas, pero técnicamente luego también es un músculo que no tenemos tan desarrollado, que en una película como del calibre de, de esta cinista se hacer, ¿no? Como llegar a tu marca, decir esto con esta energía. Es técnica y temple. O sea, por ejemplo, de Margo y de Demian aprendí lo disciplinados que son que no le tienen miedo a nada. Digo, mm. lo, la película lo dice claramente. Claro. Margo no le tiene miedo a nada. Pero de pronto de Brad, por ejemplo, también aprendí el temple, tener calma, 
¿no? La idea de que si no estás calmado no puedes ser curioso y si no eres curioso, pues no puedes ser un artista. O sea, la mitad del arte es estar en esta búsqueda constante. Devin, do you have clear why are you a filmmaker? I guess the only thing I can say is I don't really feel like I know how to do anything else. It's exactly. all I've ever wanted to do. So, sure. you know, it's like I reach those moments where I'm like, uh, you know, we all have these kind of down moments, uh, I think, uh, as artists, you know, where you sort of beat your head against the wall, go, why am I doing this? This sucks. And, you know, I guess anytime I reach a moment like that and I try to consider what I could do that would not be making movies, Uh, I sort of come up empty. I don't know what else I could do. It, it's it's sort of for better or worse. It's all I can do. So that's the only reason I can give you. Mm. Let, let's talk about the music. The music it's a very important um, point in in your creation. Uh, mm. um, how has been your relationship with music and cinema, uh, considering the past of time and considering the past of projects? Do you do 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 you feel more uh, that this type of arts can, can be together, you know, blast together more easily with you right now? Yeah, I mean, I think I've you know, almost as important as movies to me growing up was music. You know, I, I started playing drums when I was maybe about 10 years old. And from then on, it kind of, uh, at least until my 20s, it was, it was, it was, it was pretty uh, a big part of my life. Um, it's how I met Justin, who's the composer mm -hmm. who I, I work with um, on all What the What a great soundtrack. Uh, yeah. yeah well, it's he, incredible. He's, he's amazing. And, yeah. and uh, so I can't take credit for any of that. All, all I know is that there's a certain way of working with him that, that works for me, works for him, where um, unlike a lot of director-composer relationships, you know, he's involved right from the get-go. So as soon as I have a script, I'm giving it to him so that by the time we're shooting, Uh, I have a lot of the music already. I mean, even when Diego and I were doing the uh, the iPhone rehearsal, yeah. mm -hmm. sort of, the, I was able to put a lot of Justin's music onto it. You know, so it's uh, so that it would feel even more like what the final film would feel like. We could really see what was working and what wasn't. Um, mm. So it's it's yeah, it's it's kind of there at the outset for me. But I do think cinema and music are are cousins. You know, they they they're exactly. both temporal art forms, and so there's a way in which they can inform each other. ¿Escuchabas música antes de entrar en en particular, o no eres de esos actores? Sí, y tengo algo que que ya se lo he dicho a Demian, pero todos los días antes de entrar al set, cuando estaba o haciendo ejercicio o preparándome, ponía el soundtrack de La La Land y me llegaba mucho, pues claro, o sea, era como muy metaficción también estar escuchando su soundtrack a punto de ir a trabajar con él. <laughs> it was a, it was an easy movie to uh, to have a, a final cut of it. No, no. I, I mean, bet it's... there's a lot of, you know, you left behind on the edit room and I, I'm 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 no, wondering what is, you know what I mean? I'm very curious. You know, Diego so. had some great we were even yeah. reminiscing about it the other night. He's probably still mad at me. He had some great scenes that uh were on the cutting room floor. It's it's um You know, uh, ironically, the first cut of the movie was shorter than the movie is now. I've never had that happen where I, I tried to cut it initially just to plot. Um, and you, it felt not, it didn't have enough richness. It didn't have enough character. So then we added a bunch of stuff back in. Then it got too long. Uh, you know, it got to like uh, three and a half hours or something like that, you know, too long. And so then it went back down. And So the whole edit was sort of kind of back and forth, like an accordion, trying to find that perfect balance. Because it is a long movie, but I mm -hmm. wanted it to feel like a short movie. Like you sit exactly. and watch it and you don't feel the time pass. You need the levers, huh? You got a really clean cut. Uh, uh, it's very easy, the, the, the journey of, of, of you, uh, good, your yeah. story. Yeah. Yeah, eh, bueno, creo que es mi turno ahora, ¿verdad, Nico? A ver, ¿cómo se llama esta bebida? Es el Adele. Es Adele. ¿Qué tiene? La base es Bourbon. Ajá. Que lo hacemos un, un fat wash mm. con macadamias. Ajá. Le ponemos una, un té, una infusión de roibos y tintura de vainilla, entre otros ingredientes. Y ahí no está... una galleta de semillas con, una, con un pequeño postrecito. It, it, it's like breakfast, you know <laughs> what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. it doesn't like look so bad. <laughs> yeah, even though it's very <laughs> early good, morning. Good, good. I propose a toast, my friend. Let's, um, it, this is for, for Babylon, you know what I mean? For, uh, I don't know if you agree with me, but uh, These are difficult times for us everywhere in the world. So it's very important to tell stories, mm. you know, to keep stories alive, you know, to, to have our, our past in our present, you know. I don't know if you agree with me, but cheers. Thank you. Yeah. Cheers. Salud. Salud. This is your first time in Mexico City? Yes, not in Mexico, but in Mexico City, yeah.
¿Qué, qué, ¿Qué le recomendarías como But primer visitante? Yeah. Why can't we do all interviews just like, like this? Like this, right? <laughs> so, yeah. ¿Qué, yeah, yeah. That's how you do it in Mexico City, yeah? Always. Always. Yeah, yeah. But all the time. Yeah, ¿Te acuerdas yeah. cuando fuimos a la inauguración de ese a cine? Tijuana, claro. See, we went to the, to the opening of a cinema in Tijuana. Yeah. And we went to a party. It was a crazy party. Not as you, in your film, but <laughs> almost like in your film. Yeah. We had a great time, you know? Yeah, that, that, was, bien. that, that was like my first movie. Like, this is like six years ago. It was five years ago. Something like that. No es tanto tiempo. So, te, te prometo no anarquía. Te prometo anarquía. Yeah. Exactamente. Este, it has been a blast to spend uh, this morning with you guys. Thank you. The best of luck to Babylon and thank you for this beautiful movie. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Gracias. Thank you so much. Salud. 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 Thank you and thank you for the drinks. Yeah. Gracias, Nico. Ah. Gracias. Salud. Gracias. Salud.